Hey, Alison Verhalen here with AV Writing Services, and today I am talking to you about your newsletter, how to get more people to open your newsletter. So we've all been there, right? We spend all this time and effort creating our newsletter, sending it out on a schedule, no one opens it. We, we hear crickets, right? Maybe you get a few people opening it, and that's about it. Um, so I'm gonna go over some things about how you can fix that the first thing is set your expectations because on average now it's going to vary from industry to industry but on average if 30 to 35 percent of your subscribers are opening your newsletter that's actually pretty good that's what most industries see on average obviously some people do better and some people do worse it, it's going to vary um so if less than half of your your subscribers are actually opening your newsletter that's fine. Don't panic. You're doing well. That said, if you're not there yet, or if you're there but you want to get even better, we're going to give you some tips as to how you can do that. So the first thing is more technical than strategic. Uh, just make sure you're not getting sent to their spam folder, right? Because our emails are getting better and better at just shifting everything to spam. Um, if you use something like MailChimp for your newsletter, MailChimp does a really good job of doing this automatically. As soon as someone subscribes to your newsletter, MailChimp is gonna send them a confirmation email saying, are you sure you want to subscribe to this newsletter? And when they click yes, then it's gonna go um, into, A, they're gonna become one of your subscribers officially, and B, that's gonna be when they open that email from MailChimp, that's going to be an indication that to Google or whatever your email server is, that this is an email that you actually want to get, that you want to get emails from this email address, whatever that email address is. So that's number one. Um, it doesn't hurt to send a quick message to follow up. Uh, again, if MailChimp does not do this automatically for you, if you have another service, I don't know if Constant Contact does this. I would assume that they would, uh, but just send a quick email send, saying, hey, make sure, um, or if they, when they subscribe to your newsletter, you can put a note there saying, make sure this does not go to the spam folder. Just check real quick, make sure that it's not in there so that you can continue getting our stuff because you just told us that you want to get our stuff. So please make sure that you actually get it. So that's number one. Number two, now we're gonna get into the strategy. Know your audience. And this is gonna lead into everything else that we say. Know what their pain points are. Know what search terms they're searching. Yes, keywords matter for newsletters, even though they don't come up in searches. We'll get to that a little bit later. Um, so know your audience. Know what their pain points are. Know what they're gonna, what they're likely to open. What are their challenges? What, what problems are you solving for them? Because when you speak to those pain points and present a solution, they're gonna be much more likely to open up your newsletter. So, you know your audience. Next thing you need to do is write about a topic that speaks to their pain points, right? Now, for me, I do this a lot for the blogs, for our website. I work really hard to make sure that the blog post is filling a content gap in our industry. And then the title of the blog is also gonna be the title of the newsletter. Because again, I've made sure that that title is as tight as it can be, right? It's short and sweet. I want the whole thing to show up in their, um, in their inbox and if you use something like um, CoSchedule, CoSchedule's headline analyzer, I use that all the time to make sure that that my headline is as effective as it can be and one of the things that CoSchedule will do, that headline analyzer, when you scroll down to the bottom, it shows you what that headline looks like in an inbox. So you can see if the entire headline is visible in the inbox or if it gets cut off and where it gets cut off. You might be okay with it getting cut off if you want a longer title, that's fine. But is the what's visible, is that going to attract their attention? So that leads us to our next point, is write a killer subject line, right? If the subject line doesn't speak to them, because that's the first thing they see, if that doesn't appeal to them, if that doesn't sound interesting to them, they're not gonna open it and then you've lost everything, right? Then you don't have a chance to get them back to your website, to buy your stuff, to engage with your content, none of it. They're just gonna delete it. They might pass over it and save it for later, um, or maybe they pass over it and save it for later, and then later they look at it and go, oh no, I'm, I don't care about that, and then, then they delete it later. So your subject headline 
has to be killer. And yes, keywords matter because when people are searching for something, when they're searching with particular keywords or key phrases, they're doing that because it, that's a problem that they want solved, right? So even though using keywords in your headline for your newsletter is not necessarily gonna help it show up in searches, it will speak to your audience because they'll see those words and go, oh yeah, I, I do need to know more about that. Oh yeah, I was wondering how I could fix that. So absolutely take advantage of that and use those keywords in your headline to signal to your audience that you know what their pain points are and you're gonna to speak to those pain points. And then leading into that, when they open up your newsletter, provide value. Don't just sell in your newsletter. Now there are some exceptions to this. If you're selling like inexpensive jewelry or home care products or something that's fairly inexpensive, then maybe you do wanna sell in your newsletter. I just bought something out of a newsletter a few weeks ago that um, it was a moisturizer. Like, I don't need to do a lot of deliberation about that, right? I can buy that straight from the newsletter. Also, again, because it was a newsletter, it was a brand I already liked and trusted. So if you're selling something with a small price point, that's fine. If you're in a B2B uh, industry, a service-based industry, if you require a little more trust on the part of the consumer in order to get them to buy from you, then you're not gonna wanna sell right away in your newsletter. Again, there are a few exceptions to that. If you have a sale, if you are launching a new product or service, then that's fine. You can absolutely promote that in your newsletter, but at least 80 to 90% of your content of your newsletters should just be providing value. And then you do want to get them back to your website, right? So that's, like I said, I always write a blog post and then I promote it in my newsletter. So that's a link back to my website right there is the, the link to that blog post. So that's providing value. And then I provide some tips, kind of like the beginning of the blog post. This is the pain point. This is why it's a pain point. This is what's gonna happen if you don't solve this problem. And then I provide a link to the newsletter, to the blog post. So that should prompt them to actually click on the link back to my website to get that juicy content. So I'm providing value in the newsletter. I'm not, I'm not just selling, I'm not, they're not going to open the newsletter and see, hey, buy my stuff. Hey, did you know I'm a content marketer and you need all this content for your website and your newsletter and your blog and all this strategy? I don't do that. I want to provide value and convince them that I can solve their problems for them and that I know what their problems are. So that's where I start first and foremost, and that's where you should start. Next up, segment your list, right? You, you want people uh, for each product or service that you provide that when they're looking at that content and then they sign up for your newsletter, they should go in that segment. So if you're selling financial services, for example, if someone is looking at information about um, IRAs versus 401ks, maybe you want to put them in the retirement planning category. If they're, if they read a blog on your website about, uh, planning for college, how to pay for college for their kids. Maybe you have a separate segment for that service, right? So segment it out so that you can provide only the most relevant content to the people who want it. And that's where you're really going to see that uptick in engagement. Um, forget what the stats are off the top of my head, but I think MailChimp says something like segmented lists get like double the amount of open rates and click-through rates compared to non-segmented lists. Um, again, this is all in the blog post, so if you wanna double check my work, just go right there to the blog post because it's all in there. I did my research. Um, so when you segment the list and you make sure, again, this goes back to knowing your audience and speaking to their pain points. If you can speak to their pain points as specifically as possible, not a general pain point about financial planning in general, or divorce in general, but a specific part of that, that's where you really want to get that audience, is right where they're searching for something and they've already expressed interest in it and that's how you can reel them in and say, hey, I can help you with this. If you take that, if someone signs up for your newsletter after having looked at something about retirement planning and you show them content about saving for college, 
you're not going to click on that because they don't care about that. They haven't expressed any interest in that. They're going to be like, why am I seeing that? And that can actually boost your unsubscribe rate. If they, all it can take sometimes is one, one email that is just way off base for them, for them to go, no, I, I don't want to see this anymore. I don't want um, emails from this company. And that's all it takes. We are fickle creatures and it doesn't take much for us to unsubscribe, right? It's one, maybe two clicks to unsubscribe. So keep track of that. So segment your list and then do some A-B testing. And you can do this within your segments, right? You can send out a different headline. You can send it at different times because timing matters. And I have a whole other blog post and video about that. So see what times your audience is actually checking their email and opening it up and engaging with your content. Uh, there are some general rules, uh, but play around with it and see if maybe your audience isn't active when most people are, when the average newsletter subscriber is active, right? Maybe they're active a little bit earlier or a little bit later or on the weekend or during the week, uh, in the evening. You never know. So do that A-B testing and see the results that you get. And this is again where segmenting can help. So. Finally, if you get some, um, if you have people who are not opening your newsletter, follow up with them. Send them a newsletter and say, "Hey, I haven't, you know, I've noticed you haven't opened my newsletter in X number of months or years or however long you want to send it for. Do you want to continue re receiving this newsletter?" And if they don't respond, delete it. If they do respond and say, "Yes, keep me subscribed," then great. Um, and maybe they'll go in and click the unsubscribe button and say, yeah, you know what? I don't care about this newsletter anymore. Unsubscribe. I know this sounds counterintuitive because everyone wants to build their newsletter, right? Uh, everyone wants a larger subscriber list. But again, you have to know your audience. And if someone is not, if your content isn't resonating with them, then that is an indication that they're just not your target audience. And instead of spending all that time and effort trying to get them to open your newsletter, just let them go. And then you can spend your time and effort trying to get the people who do really want your content. So focus on that. And sometimes purging emails is okay. Sometimes the email address is dead. Sometimes someone just left it dormant, switched to another email, hasn't checked that one in forever, and no one is seeing them anymore. So if they don't respond, Assume that it's a dead email address and or they just don't want your newsletter anymore and go ahead and unsubscribe them. And let them know in the email, if you do not subscribe after a week or whatever, we will unsubscribe you. So that is it. Those are our tips today for how to get more people to open your newsletter. If you have any other questions, you can reach out to us. We are at avwritingservices.com. You can reach me directly by emailing us at info at avwritingservices.com. That is our tips for today. Have a great week and happy marketing.